Parmesan crusted and I have these thin sliced boneless chops and they're says they're large pieces I have about four and a half pounds here now this shake and bake does about oh I want to say about 10 pork chops sometimes less sometimes more so I will show you when I run out of this what I do with the remaining pork chops afterwards um, also as well with that we're gonna be making some instant mashed potatoes yes I said instant but I'm gonna show you how to doctor them up and make them taste like real mashed potatoes and then we're gonna make brown gravy and some green beans with a piece of oil so let's get started on the pork chops so right here we have a big package four and a half pounds okay and we're gonna start with one of these right here okay guys so one thing you want to do first to prepare is you want to take your rings off so I always just throw my ring to the side and you also want to wash your hands so I'm gonna come over here and give them a quick washing okay guys so I got my hands all washed up and nice and clean I'm just drying them right now because you don't want any extra water in your pork chops okay all right so now we can start preparing our pork chops and I like to use some tongs so I don't get my hands too terribly dirty but what I start with is one of these packages and one of these they always come with two Let's see if everything works out good for me today, guys. <laughs> okay, so into your bag, you wanna put a couple pinches of just regular salt. If you like sea salt, you can use that as well. Um, but just know on the sea salt, you wanna use less of it because it's more salty. Now, I'm also gonna put some Italian seasoning. It always goes real good with the Parmesan crusted. So I'm just going to put a few dashes, three, four, five, six, seven. You don't want to overpower it. So that's about seven dashes because we do have a big package of pork chops. And then I got my grounded pepper. I saved these bottles and I buy the big things of peppercorns, the different variety. And then I refill these. It's a great option to save on money when you have children. So I just grind it like this. It's easier for me that way. And I put it right in the pan. Or I'm sorry, the bag. <laughs> okay, so you just wanna give this a twist and shake it up real good so all the seasoning is evenly coated, okay? All right, so now, there's a way of doing this so you don't make a mess. I lay my bag flat like this and open it, okay? And then, I always cut a slit in the pork chop package because it helps me peel it better. Now, I will tell you guys, some people like to dip their pork chops in egg or something wet before the shake and bake. I will tell you that's not a good idea because you want the shake and bake to get crispy and coat up. It's not going to do that if you have too much moisture on your pork chops. Those look really nice and fresh. They do. I love these kind. I think they're the sirloin chops. Thin chops. Boneless center cut. Okay, so they're the center cut chops, guys. These are the best. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, so I do about two at a time. And I forgot to tell you guys, I have a pan lined with aluminum foil you want to do that because that helps crisp it up as well and then what i do is i take a little olive oil well if the cap cap will come off and i just drizzle it it says to do it on an ungreased pan but i always like to put a little olive oil because it gives it a little bit more crisp okay so now you're going to do the same thing with your bag once you got your couple of pork chops in there you kind of just shake it around. Okay, like so. And then you want to take your tongs here, lay it flat again. 
and take them out with your tongs. Make sure you shake the access on. Yes. That's my daughter in the background, guys. She's my little mini-me. She likes to give me reminders. And you kind of just do that after you shake the excess off. It doesn't coat it a lot, but it coats it enough. It's going to be real flavorful. You just shake it off again. Okay, so shake off your excess again. And put it on your lined right there like that, okay? So I'm going to continue doing this. And then once they're all on the cookie sheet, I'll show you what they look like and what I do next. Okay, guys, so... This is what they look like once you get them all on there. And see, we still had a bunch left. So what we do is we put in some of our seasoning bowls and we just kind of just go around and season them a little more. Like so. And that way the top gets a really good breading. You don't want to waste any of this because it's that got that good Parmesan flavor in there. It's also got Parmesan cheese grinded up in it as well. So you just keep doing this like so. It makes it so much easier when you can put it in one of your seasoning bowls and just pick it up like seasoning. Okay. So now I'll just set that to the side because when they, about 10 minutes into them, we're going to flip them over and do the other side with what's left of that. Sorry about that noise in the background, you guys. That is my male cat and one of the cats next door is in heat, so he's not been quiet. He keeps up, uh, us up half of the night. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. I can still hear him. And we're gonna bake this for about 10 minutes on 400 degrees. And then we're going to pull it out, flip them over, put the rest of this on them, and then do them for another 10 minutes. So when we get to the 10 minutes, I will show you what to do next. But meanwhile, what we're going to do is start working on the mashed potatoes and gravy and the green beans with beef bouillon. Okay, guys, so... We got four cups of water going in this pan for our mashed potatoes heating up, okay? Uh, it says to add your milk and everything to the water, but I don't do that. A lot of times it overflows. So I get my water heated up first, then I add my milk and my butter. Over here, I have three cans of green beans going with three beef uh, buons. I can never pronounce it right, and about a half a teaspoon of fresh garlic cloves, little salt, and pepper. This will all cook down together and taste really yummy. I normally put onion in it, but I don't feel like messing with onion today. So <laughs> I got company coming over, so I don't want to be touching oniony stuff. Okay, so well, this is heating up over here. Go ahead and add your butter. You want to add, oh, uh, this is about a half a stick of butter. Okay, so add your half a stick in there. Let that get melted up, and then we can start adding our milk and other stuff. So once that melts down, then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, guys, so <laughs> um, this is what you want it to be. It's going to be to a boil. We're going to give it a quick stir. Now, we're going to go ahead and add our milk. Now, I just eyeball my milk. You want to eyeball about one and a half cups. I think, I think mm, that's probably about right right there. Okay, now you want to heat your milk up, which it will heat up very quickly, okay, you guys? So what I like to do while my milk heats up is come over here and get my salt and pepper. And I like to go ahead and add it in my water mixture. Boy, those this, pork chops smell good. Mm -hmm. This is about three to four pinches of salt, okay? It depends on how much salt you like, okay? Now I'm going to grind these up. <laughs> and you want to put your salt in. Now, a lot of people like more salt than that, so you can salt. Then you can salt and pepper to taste. So give it a quick stir. 
while that's heating up, put your lid back on, kind of crack it a little bit. Now, we're going to turn this down a little bit so it doesn't overflow on us as much. And we're going to come over here and take our pork chops out for a minute to flip them. Remember I told you 10 minutes? Okay, guys, so I went ahead and got them flipped. I didn't want the steam coming out of the oven smoking you guys out. So now we're going to do the rest of this on the flip side. Look how good and crusty those look. You want to get a good crust on them because who does not like a pork chop with a good crust on it? I mean, come on, you guys. Going your way. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and just do that, you guys. So that's what the flip side's going to look like. We're going to put them back in for 10 more minutes, and then they should be done. Um, meanwhile, while they go for the 10 more minutes, we're going to finish up our mashed potatoes and green beans. Okay, guys, so I have this right where I want it, my milk and all. I went and got me a spatula here. You mean a whisk? Or, yeah, I'm sorry, a whisk. <laughs> I always do that stuff. Now I'm going to come over here and grab these mashed potatoes. And yes, they are instant there again, but I'm going to doctor them up. If you don't have time to sit there and peel potatoes, well then, you know, you can use the instant. So I add a little bit at a time. Okay, and I whisk them in until I get the consistency I want. That's why I add a little bit at a, at a time, okay? So now we're going to add some more. My daughter's going to add some more in there for me. Okay. Try not to make a mess there, sweetie. You want to turn that down for me? Because this is going to start popping on me. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little more. You want them to come out a little chunky for the way that we're about to make them. And just remember, you guys, we had a funny little thing just happen. <laughs> I forgot to shut my stove top off. You're supposed to shut it off when making instant mashed potatoes once you get it to the boil consistency. So once you start adding your mashed potatoes in, it's time to shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> so while this is still hot, I'm gonna add just this little bit of cheese I got left, triple cheddar. Okay. And I'm going to add this cream cheese that I have. I have a whole stick of cream cheese. Yes, I said cream cheese, you guys. And you wanna just keep stirring it around. The cream cheese will be a little hard at first, but once it starts hitting those hot mashed potatoes, it'll start melting. You hear the creaminess of those? Really, really good. Okay, guys, so I gave them a really good stir. What I'm going to do at this point is shake my whisk off and put my lid back on and just let it finish melting. And then I'm going to come over here and stir my green beans that I got going. Look how yummy those are looking, you guys. Those are almost done. Now, the next step we're going to do, excuse me, you guys, allergies, is make our gravy. We got three cups of water heating up over here, and today I'm going to make instant gravy because I'm kind of in a hurry. Like I said, I got company coming over. So I'm going to start with, I have three packets here, but I'm going to start with two. Better get out of the way there, sissy. I about burnt myself. <laughs> You're going to whisk in one at a time, okay? If I can do this without burning myself, you guys. And I just use a fork and I just whisk away. You want to whisk till you get your chunks out. You want to get that other one over there for me, sis? It's right there behind the mashed potatoes. <laughs> 
You don't have to stretch far. Okay, now we're ready for the second one. Okay, give it a good whisk. I want to give a shout out to a lot of my viewers, all my viewers and my friends and families. Thank you for watching me and commenting on my videos. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and comment. If there's something you want to see me make or something you have a question about, go ahead and comment on my comment uh, thing below and I'll comment on you. And just remember to like and subscribe to my videos as well. And I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram under Country Views. So if you want to go check them out and like and subscribe as well. I think we're ready for the other packet. Alright, so this is going to take about all three packets, okay? Ooh, give them a good view of this. See how your green beans are bubbling? Let them do that for about five minutes and then they're done. That's what you want. Okay, so now we're gonna add our third packet. Whisk it in. And once this wicks in, then it's gonna start thickening up. And then your gravy will be done. So I'm gonna just keep whisking this in. And then when it gets to the consistency I like, I'll show you what it looks like, you guys. Okay guys, so we pulled the pork chops out of the oven. This is what they look like after 20 minutes later. Do they not look so good? And they got that nice crunchy brown to them. Golden brown, not overly done. And then we have our mashed potatoes with the cream cheese, our beef gravy, and our green beans. So I'm going to go ahead and start making plates for my two sons, and they're going to be the taste testers again. You want to bring it over here, uh, son Austin? <laughs> we'll start with the pork chops here. I'll start off giving you guys two a piece, okay? Look how good that looks. It's so yummy. Okay, and then we're going to come over here and do the mashed potatoes. Make sure you give them one more good stir before you start plating them. Don't those look, like, so good, you guys? Yes. I know you're hungry, too, aren't you, sis? Mm -hmm. I guess I better get a bigger spoon out, huh? Got some hungry boys here. And you just make a little dip in the middle for the gravy. If you don't like gravy, don't put gravy. But my family loves gravy. And this is the consistency you want your gravy. The longer it sits after you boil it, um, the thicker it gets. So bring your plate closer. So we just go on the outside like so. You want to set that over there for me, sis? And then now we got the green beans. Give them another good stir because remember we put bouillon in them. Beef bouillon. Okay, bring your plate closer, bub. And there you have it. That's what it looks like. Now I'm going to get uh, my soon-to-be son-in-law, John Pardo, however he wants to go by, get him plated up, and then they're going to taste test it. Okay, guys, so we have our taste testers here. We have my son, Austin, and my soon-to-be son-in-law, John, but I always call him Pardoey if you tuned into any more of my videos I told you the story how he got his name with me so how is it guys well you got the mashed potatoes okay that's a good one there <laughs> uh, you'll just pick it up with your fork I didn't give you guys a knife <laughs> scrumptious Ooh, let them have the look on the inside of that chop. Look how pretty that is, you guys. It's perfect. Mm. Take a bite of the pork chop, Austin. Mm -hmm. 
good. Let's see you take another bite. We didn't see. We are focusing on John's plate. Look at that. Yum, yum, yum. Did you try the green beans yet? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, guys. Well, thank you for visiting us. Once again, like and subscribe to my videos. Visit my Facebook page and my Instagram. And we will be uploading some more tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.